Hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover the amplification factor and the separation margin. The amplification factor helps to evaluate the dynamic behavior of turbo machines. And it helps to define the separation margin and the separation margin dictate how close to a critical speed a machine is allowed to operate. It is common for modern turbo machinery like rocket engines to operate above the first critical. And as higher speed are necessary to achieve desired output requirements. And operating speed range will continue to approach or reach the second critical. So it is important to understand the amplification factor and make sure the machine operate with separation margin. The synchronous amplification factor typically measure how much 1x vibration is amplified when the system passes through a resonance or critical speed. The right figures show an example of the displacement probe measurements of the frequency or running speed versus the amplitude motion. As you can see in the right figure, the system with high effective damping tends to have a low amplification factor. While systems with low effective damping have a higher amplification factor. So remember that a low amplification factor is better than high amplification factor. And a low amplification factor indicates high effective damping in the system. All right, let's move on to the examples. To estimate the amplification factor, the half power bandwidth method is used. And the term half power originated from the electrical circuit theory. The amplification factor is estimated based on the equations shown on the right. To calculate the amplification factor, you first need to find the natural frequency at the peak amplitude, which is omega n. For an example purposes, the omega n at the peak amplitude is set as 1230 hertz. After identifying the omega n, the next step is to identify the omega 1 and omega 2. To obtain omega 1 and omega 2 values, you simply multiply the peak amplitude value x max with 0 0.707. At 70% of the peak amplitude x max, you could draw the vertical lines down to the x axis, which gives you the omega 1 and omega 2. By placing the omega 1 and omega 2 value in the equation shown on the right, you will get the amplification factor of 2.5. A machine running too close to a strong critical speed will result in increased vibration. So per the API standard, if you have the amplification factor larger than 2.5, it is recommended to have a separation margin to operate the machine. But any critical speed with an amplification factor of less than 2.5 is considered critically damped and no separation margin is required. If the critical speed is below the minimum operating speed, the separation margin is estimated using the equation shown on the top left. If the critical speed is above the maximum operating speed, the separation margin is estimated using the equation shown on the bottom left. Let's look into an example shown here with amplification factor of 6 and the minimum operating speed of 5000 RPM and the critical speed at 3600 RPM. Since the critical speed is below the minimum operating speed, you should use the equation shown on the right. Now, if you insert the amplification factor of 6 into the equation, it gives 13.2%. Based on the 13.2%, you could calculate the lower bound of separation margin, which turns out to be 4147 RPM. This means that to have good integrity of the machine during their lifetime, the minimum continuous operating speed should be higher than 4147 RPM. So the minimum continuous operating speed of 5000 RPM given in this example is acceptable. 
Today, we have looked into the definition of the amplification factor and the separation margin with some examples. These are important concepts to understand the dynamic behavior of turbo machines and give guidelines to design and operate the machine. That's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.